Hello guys, welcome back to Let's Play Bloodborne. In the last episode, <coughs> we cleared out Old Yarnum and opened up the shortcut. I'll show you how to use that shortcut that we opened up now. Come down here. Uh, there will be, on your first run through here, a loot beast. And he'll run and drop down here. So trace after him, and it kind of leads you to the shortcut, which is kind of clever. And then you want to go this way. I don't actually know what's that way. I'm going to look. What is that way? A big creature. And knock his face off. Oh, two big creatures. Oh, that was a bad shot. Yeah, I'm just going to cut your face off anyway. Oh, I know it's here. Uh, an important item. Hunter's torch. Why is Hunter's torch important? Because, unlike the torch, you can buff it and it does more damage. So you can actually improve the Hunter's Torch with blood shards like you can with other weapons. Completely missed Hunter's Torch. Anyway, <laughs> carrying on. We wanna... Where do we wanna go? We missed that little safe ledge. I'm trying to remember where we end up going now. Oh, there, there's a safe ledge. There it is. Cool. So this shortcut after you drop down, this is the tower that we were in. If you recall, there'll be a guy around this corner. Is that an item we missed again? No, no. And there'll be another guy waiting on this stair set for you. If we can sneak up on him, I want to get an easy visceral attack. So let me know what you guys are actually thinking of Bloodborne so far. We're about, I'd say, first quarter way through the game, <coughs> I think. Nearly finished the first Tombstones content. Still got like Cathedral Ward stuff to do, but. There's also another werewolf. That werewolf that bursts through the door moves to this pathway. We saw him when we came through earlier. Um, best thing to do is just run around him, get a backstab, and then... Oh. He went off, but I didn't actually get the visceral attack. Um, as you... Th these guys drop bloodstone shards, like, religiously, to a point where we're actually going to go fight this one, just to get some more bloodstone shards to upgrade our hunter's torch. He's going to drop down. He's going to drop down. Thank you. I'm going to get a free visceral attack on him. And kill him. Give me my free blood shards. Come on, give me what I want. Give me what I came here for. Yeah. Yeah, they they drop them really, really high. High rate of drop on those, so... Right, as you go around this corner, this is as far as we got before we showed the shortcut. So as you go around this corner, if you go left, there will be, hidden through here, a screamer. Just get a visceral attack on him. He's facing the wrong way. Easy kill. But be careful because his al he alerts a werewolf that comes around this way. So there's that beast. This beast poisons as well. So be extra careful about him. I'm just going to kill him as quick as I can. Oh no, I uh, missed an attack. There we go. Ran out of stamina. Yeah, you can see how he poisoned you there. And then another plus 10 shard. Um, that's it pretty much for after the shortcut. There's actually an item. Oh, there is an item. Oh, it's the corpse. Antidotes, nice, they will come in handy. And anything over here? Nope. Again, very little actually hidden in crates and barrels in this game. As opposed to older oh, oh if you Right, get ready, because you're gonna want to sprint. There is a loot beast here, and he's just running into the wall. We got him? Yeah, we got him. More shards? Three shards, very nice. Yeah, don't forget that loot beast. Uh, another bold hunter's mark or the face palm paper. Anything else around here? No. Just more creepy statues. Really creepy statues. Um, there are some statues like this later in the games, absent the chains. I don't see this like a chain wrapped around them. Uh, there. Um, I don't know the significance just yet of the chains, um, but it's interesting to note that there are these statues, exact same statues later in the game but no chains. Maybe an old Yarnum thing. Anyway, so we're going to head down this stair set. And if you go right here, you'll be greeted with a note. If you require assistance, you need only ring the bell. We are actually going to ring that bell, but first things first, we're going to sneak around here because there are some enemies very, very cleverly hidden in the bushes that you can't actually target. So it's quite a dangerous area. There's only there's there's only three. There's one there, there's one on the other side of this tree. 
get some easy viscerals on them. You can't actually back uh, like back visceral them because of like the layout of the land, because they're higher than you usually. It's all like rolly hills area. There's the last one here. Can we get a visceral on this guy? Yeah, because they're like either above you or below you. It kind of cheeses you out of the visceral attack. But they're quite well hidden, so don't forget about those three. Once those three are dealt with, we're going to spend one of our insights on using our beckoning bell to get some help. Where's our beckoning bell? There it is. I'm going to ring the bell and it will search for assistance. We're also going to put it on our bar just in case. Beckoning bell. And we get Alfred. Hello Alfred, how are you doing? Alfred is going to help us in this bot battle because, spoiler warning, through this door is a boss. Now this boss is a beast, so we're going to get our Molotovs and our oil lands ready. And also, we'll use a fire paper as well. Cool. So we're going to get fire paper ready. We've only got one oil land. That right there is Blood Starved Beast. Blood Starved Beast is a three stage fight. Uh, we'll try and talk through as we go through it. Um, but I'm expecting, hopefully, first time success. Let's see. So, fire paper. Molotov at the ready. Here he comes. We're going to let Alfred kind of take the heat. We got an insight there for seeing it, so we get it back. We're going to let Alfred take the heat on him. If Alfred's actually going to come in at any point. Come on, Alfred. Ooh, yeah, Alfred, yeah, going. Alfred gonna. There you go. Alfred's gonna take the heat. We're gonna try and get behind him. Oh, that's a dead end. What, what am I doing? Don't die on me now, Alfred. Or miss every attack, apparently. Come on, oh, come on. This is embarrassing. Get in there. Get some hits in. Cool. Get around the front. Oh, didn't actually get the visual attack on him. Come on. I may use more than one fire paper. Oh, well, there we go. Got the visceral attack. Nice. Nice amount of damage there. I may have got the aggro off in there for that as well. We actually skipped a stage as well. Oh, don't want to get caught up in this dead endy area. Get yourself some space. I'm going to use another fire paper just because that really did speed up this fight. Don't come over here. He wants you, not me. Right, get a. Nice. Whoa! Come on. No. That was a nice lunge. Go on. Oh, how did that miss? Come on. No. Stay still. How did that miss? Cool. Visceral. Go. No. Just gonna keep an eye on your stamina. Keep an eye on that stamina. Maybe get a Molotov thrown in there. No, that was a miss. One more. Come on. That was a hit. Yeah, get your claws out, come on. Where are you going? Whoa! Can I get a hit on you? Come on. Pebble. No, antidote, quick! Oh crap. No! Ah! Oh. I didn't realise he was attacking me. Son of a dick. And I used two fire paper. Ay, ay, ay.
Okay, we're back. We realised our mistake. We were a bit too hasty. This time we're going to save our fire paper and just try and take the fight at a reasonable pace and have our antidotes ready. We've got our good mate Alfred back. He was he is so invaluable. He's worth the insight on this fight, honestly. He's invaluable against the uh, blood starved beast, keeping him off you. I don't think it's cheap doing battles co-op style. There are some um, there are some battles that and blood and dark souls that are pretty much almost impossible without the co-op help. Um, so we'll traverse the nightmare fog again. Top myself off. Uh, this time blood starved beast will immediately start coming at you. We're going to let Alfred kind of follow us through and then let Alfred kind of do his thing. Is he going to show up at any point? There you go, Alfred's getting involved now. So now we're going to try and get behind Blood Star Beast. Get a few viscerals on him if we can. Right, stay away from Alfred. I'm talking to me, not the Blood Star Beast. So I think, I'm guessing there's some lore to Blood Star Beast. As in like, you know, he, I'm assuming he's a beast that's not had as much as a blood transfusion as other beasts would need hence the starvation, oops yeah. I've got a bit of aggro there off the book, come on Alfred, take him back Alfred Alfred whoa, good set of dodging there come on, we're halfway through, oh my bloodstain let's not forget retrieve my echoes kind of ignoring Bloodstar Beast while doing so should not be doing that, right, can I get a kind of come on, let Alfred kind of get his, yeah, he's gone into his final phase which is like ultimate poison mode he has a poisonous aura I, re I really hope Alfred doesn't die where are we he can be parried as well like if you shoot at him right I think I parried him. Get out of there. Get out. Come on. We're nearly there. Don't take him round there. I am kind of going for the parry. Oh, we got it. Oh, I killed him with a parry. How nice was that? Uh, we get the Flimiru Chalice for doing that. Um, we go behind here, there's some antidotes for you as well. That was actually a really easy fight, I'm quite happy with that. And you light this lamp. And that is pretty much it for old Yarnum. Uh, so we're going to return the Hunter's Dream. But f um, yeah, we are. Yeah, we're going to turn to Hunter's Dream and do some leveling up. I'll see you guys there. We want levels. Oh, something I completely forgot to do was actually demonstrate the sword spear, the ri your rifle spear. So let's do that now. So the rifle spear, in its one-handed mode or its regular mode, uh, it's kind of a thrusty weapon. So there's a lot of thrusting. And nothing wrong with a good thrust. Charge it up, you get a big thrust. Um, if you trick it, it becomes like a pole arm, and you kind of start swinging it about with some nice big sweeping swings. Uh, it's two-handed charge, however, is the reason it's so great. It charges up, runs forward, and every moment you are moving forward, you do damage to any enemy in your path. So it is really good for taking out groups. Uh, pressing L1 during a combo shoots. Uh, we're not actually going to do it because we are kind of low on bullets, but we will apparently use a blood valve for no reason. Welcome. What is it? Right, channel blood echoes. What do we want? So the... Uh, rifle spear scales with skill, so we're going to start pumping some. I'll put one endurance. We're going to start pumping some uh, things in skill, just to give us a bit more damage on the rifle spear when we use it. Uh, we won't. We don't. We'll use it for some instances. I do really like the saw spear. Um, let's also up our hunter's torch. 
I don't use Hunter's Torch that much, but it's nice to have it, you know, ready to go. Um, what else was I supposed to do? There was something else I wanted to do. Don't remember. Uh, upgrade. That's upgraded. Huh. I completely forgot on the other thing. I was, oh, we'll buy some bullets, because they're the thing that we kind of need to get a few stocks stocks on. We've only got 41. Which I know sounds like a lot, but that's like, you know, they, they do deplete quickly. Um, so that's actually, you know, thanks for watching. It's quite a short one. We only wanted to get Bloodstarved Beast out of the way. Next time, we will head back to Cathedral Ward and clear out that earlier. Also, you unlock Church of the Good Chalice, which is the uh, the lamp for the uh, Bloodstarved Beast. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time on Let's Play Bloodborne. See ya!